All right. Good evening. This is the Dighton Historical Commission meeting on December 13th. I'm Pat Gales, the chairperson. Um, this is a Zoom meeting and it will be recorded and shown later on um, Dighton's YouTube channel. Um, the listing of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Um, we'll just go around and um, I'm Pat Gales, the chair. Ken Pacheco. I'm sorry. Who are you? Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I always put that in. <laughs> Ron Smith. Irene Alley. Good, and we're all here this evening. Um, let's. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, first up is Secretary's Report. We have the minutes of from November 8th, 2022. Um, did everyone have a chance to peruse them? And if so, are there any changes or amendments? No, okay. I'll entertain a motion to waive the reading of November 8th, 2022 minutes and accept as submitted. Second. No, I need a motion first. Oh, I thought you moved it. <laughs> no, I, I, I entertain the motion. Oh, I entertain. I still moved it. <laughs> I second it. Here we go. <laughs> um, and we'll all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That passes. Okay. The budget. I have the invoice for um, the Mason, so I just need Rafa and Pat to sign it. It was for a total of 2410 because we get the town's discount. So that's marvelous. Um, so you just need to sign on the two lines because we approved this up to $80 last time. Okay. And you just need to sign under the, the account number and date both. Irene, could you just pass that over to Pat? And what was that for? That was for our notebooks, our Bible, our stuff for the oh, yeah. yep. Um so our budget is at $1,586, and once that bill is processed, it'll be $1,561.90 will be our balance. We got another report. We get a monthly report on the gift account. The gift account is the same as last month for the segregated schoolhouse. $5,683.34. So that's our budget as it stands for FY23. FY24 budget planning is up coming up. Um, <laughs> um, as I understand it, all of that paperwork should be coming out. We should be getting word of that because you discussed it at your selectman's meeting. And it's zero budget planning they're doing. Yeah. Could you explain that to us, please, Ken? Well, hopefully it wasn't my idea, but it's um, apparently we start the budget off with everything in our accounts at zero. And then we have to justify why we want this amount. So the given is nothing until we ask for additional monies, basically. So. So you have to just justify each line item? Each line item, zero. starting at zero. Makes for long days. Long nights. Yeah. I'm thinking that in order to plan this budget, we're gonna to have to have a, a budget meeting or we could have a committee of people work on the budget and then present it at our January meeting. What's our pleasure on this? I prefer the second. What was that, Matt? 
Well, we, we have all kinds of spending. We can't. <laughs> um, Because we'd have to come up with the uh, the amount we wanted for each line items. Our line items are typically equipment repairs and maintenance, professional and technical, communications, other supplies, and travel are our, our line items. So we'd have to come up for expenses in that and justify the expenses in those. I asked you a question concerning the schoolhouse. I don't know if that's no, no, because we're talking the budget line items right now. Is, FY24 budget right now. But is that one of our line items? No, that's separate. Okay. I think if we keep the agenda small for January, I realize we have a lot of stuff we can discuss. Possibly just keep that one meeting. I don't know, to, to go over the budget. Keep it. That one meeting. All right, because in January, anticipating what's ahead on our agenda tonight is will be Stacy Spies in the um, final street listing. So we'll finalize that for the uh, community wide survey update. And um, Joe Shea and Holly Roche yeah. will be here from Granite Partners to present um, CPC application for Smith Memorial Hall. So we'll have those two items and the budget. And we'll push it off to the meeting, that meeting. All right, in the meantime, um, I can send everyone the categories so you can think about it and think about what you think should belong there and some justification as to why. And how much is in there now? And right now, we started, our starting budget was $16,000 this year. 600 of that do those dollars is earmarked for um, the GIS mapping project at the end of our um, survey update. So that's like $1,000 that we have for spending. Um, I was going to say, you said 16000 Oh, six, did I say 16000 yeah. oh, I, I always wrote my well, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, Let's spend it. 1600 I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Makes a difference in Iowa's minutes. <laughs> well, it makes a difference, and I'm like, well, why are we worried about the budget? <laughs> I think that's okay. The trip to Bermuda. Yeah. I'm like, Thank you, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you take six thousand away from sixteen, and you got a thousand. <laughs> Ooh, that's new math. Welcome to my world. <laughs> All right, so we will have those three major things on the January budget. We will try to keep the rest of it as simple as, you know, as we can. So anything that comes up, we'll see if we can push off till February, which will bring up another discussion in a little bit. But would you send what you've got then? I will send what we have okay. this year in the categories. Yep. Okay. Anything else on our budget planning? Okay. Under unfinished business, the James Garden, James Briggs Garden sign. I reached out to Adam St. Hours at Designs to Signs and he's getting um, a quote together for us, the local business. And I also talked to the town administrator on a BP contact and he's getting back to me. And Rafa, I saw that you, Heard for Bob Peach, and he had some questions. Yes, these are the questions. He wants to know how big will the sign be? We can give him an approximate size. Okay. Is it going to be one sided or two? <laughs> are we going to go with the sign that is over by the river that you discussed the last time? That was a nice, I went down there and checked it out. Yeah, if we can afford that, yeah. That kind of answers a lot of questions. If we had a specific. Did he have, did you have the pictures of those signs? Or I sent him the, the draft. The send him the draft. How about the sample pictures of like from Lincoln Avenue? Yeah, yeah that's fine. 
Um, I can send them to you so that you can forward those. I would think, so that would be one-sided. Okay, what about the size, parts of the three? I don't know, how big is that? Should have measured it when I was down there. We can get those measurements. He also asks, do you want the housing description printed? Well, duh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Would it be in color or black and white? Well, the picture is black. The picture that I have is black and white. Do you have a high resolution file, a PDF file? Um, I just have the originals from Dave Derrick. I don't know if that would suffice. Will it be mounted against the fence or wall or in a post or two posts? So I think again, if we go with the two posts like we want, that would answer that question. But if that is not a an affordable way to go, then we'd have to like rethink it. Okay. So two posts for now. Yeah. Yeah. Who paid for the sign on Lincoln? I have to talk to. I think Kevin Smith, because that was Parks and Rec. I just haven't gotten to that. I think it's Taunton, the uh, river guys. I read the sign. Uh, Taunton River. Oh, oh, um, the TWRA. If that comes out in English, yeah. The Taunton River Watershed people? Yes, yes. Okay. I was going to suggest maybe if you knew anybody on that group to ask them how much that one cost to give us an idea. Might have an extra. <laughs> yeah. Get a discount, you know. Okay. So the text has to be black print, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the image is going to be colored. The images that I have are black and white. Yeah. You got one with a blue top on it. I don't think you want to have it. All right, so we'll remember this. <laughs> we'll just keep working on that. We're making slow and steady progress we're making on this. Okay. Um, next is Zero County Street. This is the one that Jasmine Semper came and um, I was just looking to make sure no one's trying to get into our waiting room. Um, she had to send a new project notification form to Mass Historical Commission. Um, Jasmine. Yes. Jasmine Semper, yeah, um, because it's like a new project. So she did that, and so we should get a notice from M from the Mass Historical Commission once they make a determination. Um, so that's that. All right, the survey and planning grant, our final documents. We have the notebooks. We have the archival sleeves to put them in. We have um, the things for the photos. So now we just need to get the copies made. So in thinking about this, when I talked to Deval Printing, that a color copy would be around $100, the black and white ones, for four of them, he quoted me one thirty-five, so that's like about thirty-four dollars, thirty-three dollars and change. Um, those were the estimates. Thinking, if we do two color sets of form Bs, that'll give us three color sets. One will be archival that we'll put into the vault, so that they're saved. One will be for our use, and one will be for town hall's use. So if someone goes into town hall. I'm not sure if Mark would have it or the assessors, but we can figure out where it would go to so that they could peruse it if we're not there. The, the light, we talked about the library having one. I know the town historian would like some copies. Um, but if we put, if we buy the thumb drives and load the files onto the thumb drives and give each, you know, like the town historian, the library, the thumb drives, then it's up to them to make their own copies. They can do it as, as they see fit. Thumb drives um, needs about a 32 gigabyte. 
you can get them from Amazon for about 15 to $16. And I, I use them all the time. Um, I was able to save all of the Form B files as PDFs, so that's done. So it would be the PDF files that go on the thumb drive so that they, they're set. Um, so what we need to decide is, is that an appropriate way for the number of copies that we wanna do? Because I figure if we get two color sets, we already have one um, from Stacy Spies that was included in the project. We get two more. That cost should be around $200. Um, so I'm looking that we print those up and not exceed um, $250 because that was an estimate that he had given me. Discussion, comments, feelings? Make a motion to accept your proposal. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, so um, we have a motion to, um, to get the two color copies from Duvall's, not to exceed $250. And uh, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Any nays, abstentions? Okay, thank you. I will work on getting that done. And then- I Already got a volunteer, I understand. And then we have a volunteer to help fill the, Ron wants to work on that clerical work, <laughs> so, so um, do we want to purchase the thumb drives not to exceed $20? Oh, I thought that was part of it. No, no. So the uh, Historic Society would like a thumb drive, but we can, we can purchase our own thumb yeah. drive and then yeah. Have, yeah. have access to this information. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, so that they would have access yeah. to it too. All right, I'll entertain a motion to purchase five thumb drives not to exceed $20. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And that passes. Okay. Um. The community survey, survey update, the phase two for Lincoln Avenue in the Mount Hope area. Stacy will be at our January 10th meeting to present the final list of properties. Um, we will discuss these with her and then vote to finalize the list at our January meeting. I will show you all the preliminary list again uh, so that you have it for January and so that you can read it. The Historic Buildings of Dighton, the program with the library, it was supposed to be held on November 28th, but um, due to illness, it had to be canceled. So Jocelyn and I are looking at after the holidays to, to reschedule it. Uh, the program will review the final survey update, a report of 2022, um, talk about some of the historic homes and also about our historical marker program. Um, Karen Gannon and Rafa had agreed to talk about their houses and their marker pro their markers. So we'll get them to see if they'll agree again. Now, is the library the one that's putting it on? Would they be the ones that ask if we should video? Yeah, yeah, it's good. yeah. Yeah, they're going to um, do all the technical piece of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it'll be on either um, the Dighton YouTube channel or the library YouTube channel, it will be available. Yeah, I don't, so, but um, it is going to be recorded. Okay. The historical marker program, we have seven buildings that have markers. And I was kind of like thinking about this and we have some town owned historical properties. So I'd like to reach out to the town administrator and the building inspector regarding the markers for um, these buildings, like Old Town Hall, um, you know, and get their input on it before we proceed with that. So can you fill me in a little bit back back though? I guess it would be this uh, as part of the historical marker program. Say I had a house that was uh, what cost is there to the 
homeowner, the building owner, or what is the cost of? The Didn't cost? I send you the marker program? I don't know if you I did. think I did. $125. It's $125 plus taxes and shipping. Oh. No, $125. <laughs> no, no, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, along with my 16000 right? <laughs> yeah, if there are 125 plus tax and shipping, there is an application. If you check your email, you're, you should have got that because I do believe I sent it to both um, you and Irene as new members. My purpose for questioning that was to put it on a video so that it can go out. I'm trying to encourage some, um, some activity. It seemed to be we got a lot of Potential of it kind of goes in spurts, you know. So, and I would expect some from our program when we do our program. I would expect some more interest from that, mm -hmm. you know. So, that's the underlying. And you always, you always, you know, someone that has an old house, we always ask them, I always approach them and ask them. And I'll always say the same thing, right? How much? So, the, now you know. It seems like it's a good program, a lot of. Towns to do it. Right. All right. So, okay. Um, the library building committee report. Ken, I'm going to have to rely on you to talk about December 6th because I wasn't able to go to the meeting. So, we had a uh, meeting of the library building committee December 6th. We had it actually at Smith Hall. So, all the members, not all the members have seen the building, but all the members got that up that night to take a look at the buildings and the possible changes that we're. Uh, Going to be doing. We talked about it because the board of selectmen just the previous week had approved the contract to do the exterior work. Uh, so we discussed that they're going to be putting cedar. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but we voted to uh, put cedar shingles on the outside of the building. It's going to, it came to $248,000. Uh, and this uh, same contract that uh, gave us the prices if we had them do any interior work, how much we would be charging uh, per hour for his uh, laborers. So they're going to be uh, putting in uh, shingling. They're going to uh, insulate the building. They're going to blow in insulation. They're going to replace, if needs be, any of the trim work. We're not taking any of the windows out. We have some original windows. We have some other windows that are aluminum windows, but they're in good shape. And we're not going to uh, touch that. We're going to update the ramp because we, we believe the ramp's going to be moved out a little bit because the windows, uh, casement windows, they open out and they interfere with the ramp. You got to have your feet uh, with. Yeah. So we'll be uh, dealing with that. So it's, uh, they think uh, the estimate, they're probably going to stop bringing some equipment over there, but they think they'll stop beginning in January um, working on the outside of the building. And we may start doing some inside work depending upon what we need uh, to do. <laughs> January 27th, the church uh, leaves uh, the building and we have complete control on January uh, 28th. The other thing is that uh, we uh, discussed the uh, going before CPC. Uh, that meeting is in, Jan I believe it's January 19th. I believe that's at uh, prime time. And uh, Joe Shea and uh, Holly Roach will uh, present to the uh, CPC what our plans are. It's a preliminary meeting, so they don't actually have the formal uh, application in. I'll give you uh, what was given to us, uh, a tentative design of what the the building uh, is right now. Uh, on one side, you'll see uh, is the way it looks right now. On the other side is the proposal that we're thinking about. So this is what it looks like right now. You can share that. I have this one too. This is a side that existing. No major uh, changes in the building. We're going to uh, put a ramp going to the stage for the for the kids. Uh, to be able to have a separate area for their part of the the library, uh, the library and uh, the ADA coordinator have applied for a grant to pay for that, a fifty thousand dollar grant, which would also um, be for other stuff. It would be for uh, computers that help those that are hearing impaired or visual uh, have visual problems. Uh, so they're seeking uh, the money for that. We may be applying for other uh, grants. Uh, green energy, we might be able to get some uh, grants for that. But on our, our next meeting here, uh, Joe Shea and, and Holly Roach will come here and present what their plans are. Uh, what, is, <clears throat> yep. what is this business about? Um, let's see. Remo remove existing basement stair? What's that all about? Well, we have a uh, 
in the kitchen. Have you been? That been building? Through it. Okay. So they, it. there's we have a kitchen, and uh, there's a set of stairs that go. Well, actually, there's two set, two sets of stairs that we're we're removing. There's one in the entryway. Um, those stairs are being removed because that's going to be the area where the teen teenagers are going to be able to. So by removing that that set of stairs, but but that doesn't prevent the use of the basement, right? It prevents the use of the basement at this time. And what was that? Again? At this time, we're not we're not allowing anybody to go into the basement right now because it's like a CPC kind of discussion. I don't want to get into it. You know, both when we when I when we see the yeah, we're, we're just going before CPC for the main. Right. Main, well, we're not talking about the base. The simple question I have is, are they planning to use that basement area for anything in the library? In the future, but not at the present time. Right now, we're concentrating on the phase one is the, the, the main floor where the library is actually going to be. That 150K that the voters voted on, is that going to, part of that going to be used to um, do the new shingling on the house? Or? Yes. Okay. The, uh, we got two hundred thousand dollars from the state. If you remember, uh, Senator Pacheco right. and, and Representative had that um, filed a bill, and we got two hundred thousand dollars. Then we got one hundred fifty thousand dollars that the voters uh, voted on state out of the stabilization fund, and uh, so we have roughly a hundred thousand. After we paid the two hundred forty-eight thousand, we have roughly a hundred thousand uh, dollars that we can use uh, right. upstairs. So they, there are some, uh, as you say, there, there are some changes. They're raising the uh, kitchen floor. It's about two feet uh, below the stage. So we're actually going to raise that floor to two feet so we don't have to have, it's, it's handicap accessible now because we're going to have a ramp going to the stage, but it also gets you into that, what I believe is going to be called the craft floor. What, what floor is that? The main floor? The kitchen, the kitchen floor. This kitchen. We have a main floor, and then you have a, a, a kitchen area that uh, you have to, Three stairs, four stairs that you go down to, We're raising that floor to make it level with with the main floor. Okay. okay. Uh, is there's there's no second floor then in that going anyway? There's the basement, which is we we'll look forward to using at some point, but that's not what we're addressing right now. And there's the main floor. Okay. So we, we're talking nine thousand square feet, which is a lot more than what our library is right now. And the basement is in relatively good shape, but we're going to we're going to apply not at this time, but we'll plan for a grant to put an elevator. And, and there'll be uh, other ways to get into the basement. But right now, since we're concentrating on the main floor, uh, we're eliminating the stairs that's going to be in the front and a stair in the back that goes down to the basement. I think you mentioned last... What about the... Um... Uh, Ron. Oh, Ron's got the... I think you mentioned that there are some features of this building that are gone. We're not any plans to replace them. Did you mention something about a tower or... Well, there used to be a tower on it many, many years ago. When you look at the older pictures of it, you can see the tower, but that's been gone. Oh, I have no idea. Quite a while. Uh, if you want to just show them this, well, you yeah. got the, you got it. Here's the pictures. We just need these oh. documents back. Right. Oh. Hmm. So we're not going to, obviously, we're not going to replace that. We're, you know, obviously, we're concerned about uh, funds, uh, but there is very little changes that the so the actual building, we've got Wayne's coding that's not going to be touched. One of the things that uh, we have to do is um, where the ramp goes up to the stage, the door is probably uh, 30 inches wide. It's going to be at least 36 inches wide for a wheelchair. So that's going to be expanded. We're probably going to take that door down completely. We're not getting rid of anything. They have some great, the, the doors are really thick and they're really great. So we're not destroying anything uh, of the building. There has to be some changes because we want to make it ADA compliant. Oh. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I saw you going around, so I didn't. I didn't. Uh, no, this is coming. Well, there's a, a way into the basement. The other but. thing is, I took a tour of the basement, and I noticed that they have a brand new, pretty close, brand new uh, furnace. But are there any plans to you can to add the air conditioning? I I, I believe there are plans, but I'm not sure if those plans are at. At this time, okay. I think that they, they may be doing that at the same time. I'm not positive that I don't have an answer for that. Unfortunately, okay. so you want this back? Or? Yeah. Yes, but have you? Everybody see the? We keep passing it this way. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what is your question about my discussions at all about the kind of oh, building? Yeah. Yeah. Was there any discussions at all about the kind of building? No, this committee is dealing with the renovations for Smith Memorial Hall. 
The Carnegie Building is um, not a part of the, this this plan. However, we are all aware that the, that is a historic building, and we want to keep a close eye on to what's happening with it. So, so, so Joe Shea and uh, Holly Roach will be here at our, our next meeting to ask for a letter of support so that they can present at the CPC that the Historic Commission is supporting the changes that are going to go. To, uh, to, uh, no, and he'll, no, no. and he will, and they both will elaborate more and they'll answer any questions that anybody has here. Uh, what is the date of our? January 10th. January 10th. And I think CBC is the, the 19th. Right. So. No, the CPC, uh, the CPC request or application for eligibility has that been sent to like Kevin or somebody or no we haven't filed it yet they're going to give a preliminary uh information to the CBC in January and February they'll actually file the the application I believe tomorrow night at the selections meeting Kevin Smith is going to speak on uh, CBC and talk about the application what the process is to the to the board of select and to the public but we haven't filled that that out yet but uh, Joe Shea and uh, Holly Roach uh, familiar with CPC, they have applied many other towns. Well, CPC, yeah, so. there's been some changes, and like you said, and the app, the application is is different than yeah. the old one. Yeah, for Dighton, but Joe Shea and Holly have done it for other towns. Yeah, you know, um, so they're aware yeah. of that. They're for example, the the old CPC, not old people, but the old CPC used to require ten copies of everything. And I don't believe you require ten copies right. of everything. So, yeah. so there's been some changes. We don't need to elaborate on that now. They're from Granite City Partners. They are the um, architects. Yeah, yeah, the architect. Yeah, renovation. Yes, right. for the reno yeah, for the renovation. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'll find it. Uh, they, we put it out to bid. Uh, we had six uh, construction companies interested. Only one applied. Was this? And they have. Oh, actually, no. That's they're not the construction company. But they've been involved with this project for a little while since we've actually purchased the building. So that we can see the feasibility of using the build, uh, building at the library. So it's it's a good group of uh, people, and we'll get to meet them next week, uh, next month. That's my report on both. Ron, I could send you. Um, early on, they did the um, the presentation for the new building in July and stuff, and I I believe I have a, a copy of that PowerPoint. I can send that to you. <laughs> Not sure you had it already, but I'm sure. I don't think I did that one. Is there any any plans or thoughts about designating these buildings as historic sites? In or what way? As a historic building. It is a historic building. It has a completed form B on it. Um, What's that mean? Those are the forms for the MACRIS website that we've been working on for the I'm survey. Either the, the National Historic or the Local Historic. I'll get uh, to that. The National Historic, that's a whole process. Um, it has, and I do believe I sent information about that, the National Register process. Um, we have an updated form B for it so that, and we've had a comprehensive townwide survey that we just completed this year. Um, there is a process that has to be followed. Certainly we can, as the commission, we know it's a historic building. We know the history of it. You know, so, I mean, that building would also be eligible for one of our markers. Not, um, not so much the market, but the actual official designation. It's also part of a um, a district that's been identified as potentially a national register district, and that's all in that final report, which I did send to you, um, that Stacy Spies put together. So that process, that's one of the pro processes that we have to start looking at, right. and you know, is the national register. We would be the ones that would do the lead work on we it. We would start it, yes. You okay. and most of the time it's looking like you end up hiring a consultant to do them. So and, so. and that's why in October 
we decided to kind of focus on what we have, learn about the you know, all of the information that we have on all of these buildings that we're doing between what is completed and what will be completed this year, you know, so that we can make a, a plan and say, okay, we have all this information. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to go towards national register, you know, designations? Um, do we want to discuss local districts just so that we have a plan? What is our goal with all of it? And that might be a budgetary item too. Exactly. So. All right, are we good? Excellent. Moving on, um, I sent you the project notification form for the DCR project for the Taunton River uh, Rail Trail. And I hope everyone had a chance to take a look at it. Um, PAL is the uh, Public Archaeology Laboratory and they completed the summary. And actually, I learned quite a bit. So did I. That was fascinating. <laughs> Um, so they were kind of like looking for some comments or input, you know, from us. Does anyone have any comments? Um, any? As a historic, from the eyes of a, the historic district, you're talking about not as a group of citizens. As the commission. Yeah. Okay. I thought their report was very complete. It highlighted, um, Uh, Very complete. Yeah, it highlighted the um, early, you know, late arch archaic and transitional archaic period when all of the indigenous people would have been here and Native Americans. Um, there are a lot of sites along there. Um, Sweet Knolls has a site. Um, so it had, had good definition. Um, it also had information that we can use in our mm -hmm. um, pieces of highlighting the history of it. So um, I, I don't really have anything that I would add to it. Mm -hmm. so summing up, I think that's fair to say we really don't have any inputs after reading it. It's most very valuable, but we don't have to get involved in any no, we have a value information and we. Yeah. Yeah, it's a complete report. So I don't think we need to uh, add to it. But we're, um, the Star Commission, particularly uh, Pat, is a stakeholder in this mm -hmm. trail. So that, that letting her always be in, you know, what's going on with the. With mm -hmm. the and I would hope at some point, I have not walked the trail. Have you, did you say you walked the trail? I haven't walked it yet, but I want to. Yeah. I, I want to also. I'm not sure this is the time of the year to. Uh, I've, I've right. walked the whole thing yeah. just because I hike yeah. in the, that area. Uh, yeah. it, I mean, my, it comments is it's, it's very nice high to walk because it's yeah. a lot of beautiful things to see there. Um, although that railroad bridge that goes over the... Oh, the sake of a Gansett River. I don't think I, I could cross I, that. I, 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 <laughs> you survived? You survived it? <laughs> I think the water there is, you look at it, it looks really deep. <laughs> you know, that thing, you know, so. And it's got big spaces, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not going to when they're done. Oh, it's railing, though, right? No. no. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to improve that uh, yeah. bridge. And they're also going to uh, do the tunnel underneath uh, Center Street. That was a Yeah, that's going to cost them some money, that one. Yeah. State, you know. yeah. It surprised me when I saw that in the uh, cover letter for this. Mm. Nobody seems to know. Yeah. Nobody seems to know what they put in the cup, you know, to fill it in. So, right. And then right. after the cross, because I think the load bearing is, is really the compacted dirt. So, when they remove that dirt, they'll have to put a new bridge in there, an, an automobile bridge, which is going to be expensive. Right? I mean, have you crossed, yeah, crossed any bit bike trails? You're probably talking like close to a million dollars. Oh, yes. Why not? Just to do that. The but, bike trails in Rhode Island, they have that situation. Mm -hmm. You're talking about light traffic well, they, lights. They, they, all these, they, that's they, a window. Ah. When, when they replace that, the, the I don't know why they wanted to uh, replace the bridge or something, but instead of building a new bridge, they 
he says, oh, it'd be a lot cheaper if we just took out the old bridge and just filled it with dirt and then pay over it. But now they're going to have to pay, the state is going to have to pay, not all, well, they're going to have to pay for twice because they paid quite a bit to put all that dirt in there and then and, and the rest of it. Now they've got to pay to take the dirt out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they anticipated the trail, but I no, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. See what that yeah. crossing looks like because in Rhode Island, it's it's almost like a train crossing. They have warning signs and all this, and you're crossing Center Street. Yeah, mm, right. That's going to be fun, <laughs> but that's not to do with us. No. So anyway, um, so I'll just you know put together a little little letter just telling you know we found it to be very complete and with valuable information and leave it sweet and simple okay um all right ron had asked for um next is about the boston post came as a historical entry information center he found a website that lists um boston post came recipients from the towns I sent that to you last night. I hope you had a chance to look at it um, and updating. I think the last one for us on there was um, Mrs. Cummings. Was she the last one? Yeah. The little nun was before. Yeah. Was yeah. So that's, that's like 2012 or whatever. Yeah. So somebody was doing that back then, obviously, must have been from this group. Right. Because I looked through it quickly, a lot of the. Um, the entries and I'm like most of them were dated I have to say but there was one from 2021 or 2022 but the rest of them seem to be like 2012 2017 they seem you know but there's one or two that were um more recent um so your thoughts are to update the recipients on that Ron uh yes and also you ran and again, I was before my time, but you ran into a little problem with the uh, eligibility. If you wanted to discuss maybe making some changes to no. the bylaw. No, um, that I think was a fluke. Um, we had a committee that worked on our Boston Post King guidelines and they did a, a lovely job. It's only been in effect for four years, 2020. No, three years, it'll be three years. So um, I think that I think it's fine. I think that was just a little kind of blip on the screen. Circumstance led to that, and events that were out of our control. I did see it in the in the, the log that other towns have gone into that same situation, but I don't know how they resolved it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's an issue. And if it is an issue, we'll deal with it as a, on a case by case basis. Is the cane over the year and mm -hmm. eyes are shot. Mm -hmm. Is that a gold-plated king? We believe that's the original king. That's what we've been told. That's the king that people have been using. The original one was gold. Looked at it quick the other day, and it looked silver, but I, I thought it was silver too. So I'm, yeah, yeah. But I'm not positive with that. It's our king. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of times got that same scenario with right over time to good disappeared the original right. I, I think that's our original though I that's think. yeah we're fortunate not every town has right yeah um so ron do you want to take on sending the recipient information to that website no we will. no problem i'll sign us back up if we, whatever we have to do And I do believe I have the write-ups. I'll have to look. Yeah, whatever you want, want to say about it. Okay. Does anyone, do I need a motion to do that or? I, I think. think so. I'm assuming we're still seeing there were inputs from Dighton on, on this site already. So it's just an updating. Okay. All right. Very good. Hey, Bill, CPC report, as quick as you can. Yes, <laughs> as quick as you can. Well, it's going to be quick. Uh, basically, we spent a lot of time on uh, 
as I brought it up and uh, exactly how the interface, the money interface works with the, with the town budget, town uh, account, and so forth, and how the state knows how to, the matching funds, are you aware of how that works, the matching funds. Are, so there's the 1% that I selected for, for it to come out of the, uh, you know, the tax receipts. There's a, the state has a matching fund, which comes from what they do is they put a type or a sort of a tax on all the income that comes from all the, um, the what do you call those things? The uh, real estate, the real, yeah, the real estate yeah. registry, the registry of deeds. So whenever someone comes in for some sort of transaction, whether it be buying a house, selling a house, or anything that requires uh, the registry to do some sort of work, then the money they get, a certain type comes out of the part of that. The state takes and gathers it all in. It comes to quite a quite a bit of money, actually, quite a few million dollars on that. And then that gets distributed to all the CPC registered towns. Um, based on probably their budget, uh, their tax receipt, and and so what what we were trying, what I was trying to get out is some of the things that nobody knew about, which how does the state know how much money the tax receipts and so forth? Otherwise, they can't do the computation of, and we get like quite a bit of money, I think. Um, over 25k, I'm sure. I think it's more than that. I don't know the exact figure, but that's added on to the one percent that we that takes out comes out of the uh, tax base. Tax base. So, um, and then and there are a lot of there's a lot of these little hidden things that that I think was I thought at the time in the meeting um, that was important to get in. So a lot of the uh, time was taken on things like that. Uh, there's been no new application, so we don't. Anything really to do with that. Interestingly enough, that once a year they actually add to everything you said. The state house, well, I think what they call them, they don't have funny names on state house. But anyway, the, they will add, supplement everything you said with an additional X million dollars that goes into that general oh, yeah. fund for that. Yep. It's really quite a bit of. Comes up to quite a bit. Yes, I, I think it's more than 25K. It might even be 50K or something like that. Back in the old days, it was like 85,000. All right. Is that, is that all you have for tonight? Yep. Yeah, more money, the better. The more, exactly. <laughs> With my 16,000. <laughs> right, um, thank you, Bill. Correspondents, I just got two postcards. One is from MHC announcing uh, around. 29 of the Preservation Projects Fund Grant Program. Um, this grant, unfortunately, you have to be on the state. Your property has to be on the state or a national register of historic places. Um, the other one is, I thought was kind of interesting it's from Blackbird, Blackburn Building Conservation out of Middleborough. They do conserving and restoring historic finishes and works of art, um, decorative murals, gold leaf, wood finishes, chandeliers, metalwork, decorative plaster, and window restoration. Here we'd hang on. Blackburn Building Conservation. To that, because that could be, um, someone might be interested in that. Okay, I don't see any public input. Quick, what? On that subject, did you get the email I sent you about the federal? Oh, yeah, but I didn't get a chance to look at that. That's very interesting. Also, as a, a pool of money that's available, it seems like it works basically the same as the state does, as far as once a year or something, and they got a budget and they split it up on projects. Rule of thumb they have is like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. The average. Is it matching? No. Not a matching grant. All right, I'll, we'll take a look anyway, at that. Look at it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. 
Um, no public here, no public input, okay. And meeting dates for 2023. So I sent the dates to you. We have February 14th is Valentine's Day. Do we wanna meet on Valentine's Day? Or do we want another day? And you're gonna be out with the little woman? <laughs> I love you guys, but uh, oh, that means you're not going to be Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, I'll I, have I'm to. I'm not a voting see. member, so it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but we miss you. <laughs> Rafa, you may have to be in charge of putting the agenda together for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we can wait until we come back. We can wait till we come back. <laughs> well, we'll be back on the urging matter. Right. I'm. I will. I'll be back on the tenth, but the agenda has to be posted on the ninth. Well, it's forty-eight hours, though, right? Yeah, you got to get it there by Thursday. I generally get it there by Thursday because Friday. They're not open to stamp it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can keep it on the 14th and just work around it. We'll just be missing Ken from the Board of Selectmen because I th kind of think we'll have a whole, if we have the uh, the budget, Great at City Partners and Stacy Spies in January, then a lot of our other things will have to be pushed to February. So, okay. Any other dates that could be a problem? Okay, we're good to go on that. We still have one open commission position, one vacancy. Do they still announce them at the so let's I've asked that we do that again, and I have now a list for tomorrow night to okay. uh, read off the vacancies in different boards. So we're going to get back to that again. Do you want to get aggressive on that or just let it simmer the way it has been? What do you mean? I mean, I can think of some people based on uh, my activity with uh, Marina's website of people that I can't believe they would not be interested if approached. Well, we're always asking people that you think might be interested. You know, I mean, I've asked, I don't know how many. Really interesting. I don't know. If, and if you watch Marin's site, but there are some history nuts besides Ron Smith that. Uh, nuts being the key word. <laughs> yeah. I, I will try to actively. We have people. posted on our um, Facebook page. Did that transfer over to back in the day at one point? Yes. Yeah, so. But I'm, I'm just they get the Facebook and all that, so I'm saying actively. If you think someone would yeah, be interested, there's nothing wrong with approaching them. People, I would be we only need that. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe again to put it on our Facebook page. You know, sure. I'd wait till after the holidays because no one's going to pay any attention to it till January. Okay. So our next meeting date is January 10th, um, 2023 at 6 p.m. And we have the agenda items that we talked about and we'll go from there. Is there anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Extensions, motion passes, our meeting is adjourned.